Good afternoon, and welcome to another Thursday afternoon live with Matuska Taxidermy Studio. Um, today we are working on the caribou pedestal. Um, I think we're in about the third or maybe even the fourth, fourth time around with this. We're really dragging this one out. Um, and we're going to play with this just a little bit more. It is another sunny day. Um, we got a little bit of break from the heat and a little break from the bugs. We had a pretty good rain this morning. That was nice to wake up to. I think if you have a crop in the ground, you're going to be very, very excited at the rain that we got. Um, and we are going to just work forward and see if we can get this caribou ready to mount today. Um, I'm Brett and this empty spot is where Tom should be. He's not here today. Um, so we're gonna fly solo and get this one done for, um, for the afternoon. So I think we're gonna do ears, focus our energy on ears and eyes today. We'll get the mannequin kind of looking like a little bit of a lifelike caribou. And we'll see if we can get him ready to possibly sew up next week. Um, so we have a couple things that we've gone through. I'll just kind of recap quick. Um, last week, we spent some time with setting the antlers. Um, these antlers were cut, the skull plate was cut in half. They were not removed from the skull, um, but the skull plate was cut in half. So that was a little bit of a challenge for us. We put uh, two pins in them to reinforce, and then we fiberglassed underneath. Um, and then after we did all of that, uh, we drilled up into the base of the antler and ran a, a piece of ready rod, probably three to four inches up into the antler, and then another three to four inches down through the mounting block and into the head. And last week we bondo and fiberglass those together. Um, so these are now permanent. Um, we will have to sew up the full length of the cape. If you're used to doing a shortcut, this is not something you want to do. You don't want to make the antlers permanent because as you know, you have to slide the cape over. So we'll, we have a full incision on this anyways, so we, we will sew it up um, down the length of the back. Um, we also did a little bit different. We removed, because these are fairly large antlers, and if you were to cut the skull to the original mannequin, um, we wouldn't have very much skull plate left to support the, the antlers. So we cut this portion away from the top of the mannequin. You can see the top of the eye orbit here. Um, we cut that off completely, similar to how the old flat top forms would, would shape but uh, we've left the bridge of the nose. We, we cut it off just ahead of the eye. So we took that part away so that we could allow more skull plate on top. And, uh, and now we've got a little challenge with rebuilding the swell of the eye. So this muscle is sculpted onto the mannequin. Here we just have the, the bone from the eye orbit. So um, we're going to, when we set our eyes, um, I'll show you a few different things that we can do to get those in place. Um, and I think we'll probably start with ears today. Either one of them you could do in whatever, in either order, whatever order you prefer. But I think we'll start the ears that way um, as we're working on, after we get the ears in, um, I can work on eyes, but still go back and babysit the ears. You want to give plenty of time to your ears, your ear to uh, to dry. So um, I'm going to start now with a little bit of a. I kind of jumped ahead earlier. I have one ear liner set in clay. I'll turn him a little so you can see. Um, and we did that. Uh, early this morning and then covered it in glue and in hide paste and allowed that to set up. So I'm going to show you first 
what I would do to get to that point. And then once we get to get the second ear modeled onto the mannequin, um, then I'm gonna cut that other ear off and I'm gonna glue it into the skin for you. Um, so we'll kind of jump ahead there. It's nice to let those ears set up at least, um, I'd like to set them up overnight, but if uh, I did this at early, early this morning, so it's had plenty of moving air and, and it should be plenty set up. But the very first and most important thing to do when, when choosing any ear is to make sure you have your skin out and you have your ear skin completely prepped. And in that case, I have here, remove the cartilage from, from the ear skin. You can see that. I've take, left the bottom on here, the, the ear canal, I've left that in place um, so that we'll maintain that inner ear detail. And then we've run around here very, very carefully with a scalpel. And I would say that even if you've done this a dozen times already, it never hurts one last time before you glue your ears in. Um, it's nice to, do, to run around the perimeter one time and just make sure you've got everything split all the way. You can feel just a little bit there. And all I'm doing is running around the very, very edge of the ear. We've done this several times um, during different topics, so you've probably seen us uh, install ears before. who says it's his first time ever being able to watch a live seminar due uh, to a busy schedule. So welcome, Victor. Uh-oh. Well, Victor, you'll have to give us a second shot next week when Tom's here too. So don't base your opinion on, on this week. All right, you are doing perfect. <laughs> um, we're just gonna get this split just all the way around a little bit further and also going to split those little leaders. We talked about that uh, a couple weeks ago, I think we did in here. And you can see here, there's these little cartilage leaders that run um, the length of the ear starting way down in the canal. And it's nice to just get those split just a little bit, even if you don't get them all the way. Um, by opening those up, we're gonna give ourselves a little bit more play in the bottom of that ear skin, which is um, oftentimes where drumming will occur. So having a nice loose skin will help, a loose fit. And we had two different sizes of caribou ear liners. Um, these are Gary Zaner's ears. They're fantastic ear liners. They're, they're thermal form. So they can be heated and shaped if you were to want to change the shape of them. Um, they're super easy to trim um, if we needed to make, if we started with one that was a little bit big and we needed to trim it down. These are the smalls and um, I test fit them earlier and they fit really, really well. So no alterations needed, but I am gonna show you anytime you put in an ear you really, really want to do a good test fit of the ear liner into your ear skin. And once you've split all the way around the perimeter, um, you can do that. Make sure that your ear skin is well hydrated. You don't want it to be dry. Um, and I'm just gonna slide this in and make sure I have a good fit. And I'll show you a couple things that will help tell me good indicators to the fit. One of those is that you can get your ear edge all of the way around and there you can see the skin and the inside of the ear 
lays really nice. There's no drumming. It lays against the backside here. Um, that's really, really, really important. Um, I can pull it down. This bottom corner fits in there nicely into the front. Yeah, that's a good fit. That's a real, real good fit. So step one, uh, split your ears, take out your cartilage, do all that good stuff to prep your skin, and then get a really good test fit. And so we've got that accomplished. Now that I know that my ear liner is going to fit in the skin, um, I want to get this ready to put on. We're not going to glue this one in just yet. Um, we like to preset our, our ears. And it's, it's nice to do because you can spend a little bit of time and create a really accurate ear butt. And caribou have a fairly small ear, but that ear butt is extremely important because there's a whole bunch of skin that is here at the back of the head that relates to the anatomy of the ear, of, of the ear butt. If we over sculpted that and we put in too much clay, then we're not going to have enough skin to properly cover it and we're going to have a gap in the back of the head. Um, or we're going to have a plate, more than likely, we're going to have to pull skin around and um, that could create issues in the back. Um, it also will create issues with your eye. Um, antler set and several different things. So it's nice to accurately sculpt your ear butt um, from the outside. And I'm going to do that now. I've got in with me a one of Mark Gonnering's whitetail ear casts. Um, these are really handy. Even though I don't have a caribou ear cast, I know that the, the deer family um, all of this muscle structure is going to be similar and relate to um, and relate from animal to animal. Size and shape and antler burr location might be a little bit different, but um, an ear cast along with some good reference. We have photos, we have a book, um, we've got some real good information here. Um, I'm going to use that and just go from there. This is a nice picture um, and somewhat similar to what we're going to do. So I'm going to do both ears forward, similar to that other ear, um, and we'll set that. So to do that, before I put the ear liner in clay, I want to make sure that I've done all the prep work that I need to to the liner itself. If I needed to trim it, I would have all the trimming done. Um, I would have any splits, if there were little splits in the ears that needed to be cut out um, to accommodate splits in the skin, I would have that done. Um, nothing needs to be done to, to this one. Um, so I can proceed. The first thing I like to make sure we do is rough the ear liner. Um, these ear liners are not made with a mold release. We don't, they don't require any kind of a release. So we don't necessarily have to have, um, we don't necessarily wash the, the liner with lacquer thinner or to remove any kind of a release, but we do like to rough it up. And the form rougher works really well. And I'm just gonna go inside and, and this is a little bit on the smooth side. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just going to rough up that surface to promote adhesion so the glue sticks to the ear liner. Um, most of the time, the ear liner is not where your adhesion problems is, uh, occur. Your adhesion problems often occur between the skin and the glue, but we still like to make sure that we've done everything we can to promote adhesion for the ear liner too. So again, I'm just going up inside this. It's probably hard to, hard to see, but, um, and then I'm also going to take a little file 
a little Riffler file, and I'm going to come right up under and make sure that I address the underside of the of this little this little wing that comes down here. I'm going to get in on the back side of that and rough that up. Um, and once I've got the whole surface, um, I can proceed. I'm going to go around to the back. Rarely do you have issues with the back. But you can get a little, little drumming if you're not paying attention in the, the low spots of the back of the ear. Um, so we'll just quickly rough this up. And these are there's a fiber reinforcement in this ear liner. And as I rough it up, I'm just kind of getting some of those little fiber strands to stand up. And those will grab the glue. And that'll make sure we have a really good stick. Okay, um, that's gonna be good, I think. And now, now this ear is completely prepped. We will continue prepping the skin before we glue it in. But for now, we've done everything that we need to do to the ear, and now we can start sculpting the, the anatomy of the ear butt. Um, and I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna go fairly quickly through that. Um, we've done this before on other, on other uh, sessions, so I'm not going to get too far involved in it. But one nice thing that most of today's mannequins, no matter who you're getting your mannequins from, um, you have a pretty good indication of the, where the ear connects. And I'm going to turn this... Okay, so at home they can see a little bit of what I'm doing. There we go. That ought to get you. Um, so I'm going to the bottom of this of the ear cartilage, this little eustachian tube that comes through here, is going to connect right here on the mannequin. And there's not a depression, some some mannequins will actually have a little bump there or a little, a little a divot. Um, this has the actual shape of the ear, the ear muscle. So I know that I have to be up here and the muscle all occurs down below it and I'm gonna be right in the low spot there. So I like to, anytime you have a flat surface, I like to allow a little bit of room and I'm just going to remove some clay there, just so I have some flexibility. I'm not going to interrupt the, the shape of the ear butt, which Gary left us right here. Um, shows kind of the bottom of the ear butt. I like that, so we'll leave that in place. But now um, I can vary the depth um, and make sure that I have the proper depth, including the, the base of the ear, that which we left on the skin. I think that'll be good right there. Also, every ear liner is made slightly different, and there is there's a little bit of a variance on the bottom as to how much plastic covers through here. I'm going to open this up just a little bit so that I can push that inner ear detail out the bottom because this one's fairly shallow. So to do that, I'm just going to cut the bottom of this open just a little more, something like that. So I'm going to leave just a little more so I can push that inner ear detail through. We can plan on that being right about there. Okay. Now I'm also going to bring up my reference picture. Um, this is a pretty good picture here to get a little closer. I'll try to get the glare off of it. Um, you can see that the ear itself sits really close to the antler burr. There's not much, oh, I'm just glare, there. There's not much light between the ear and the base of the antler. Um, also, it sits very close and you can see that the back of the skull 
is really tight and compressed on a caribou. Um, so a couple observations from there, and then I'll come back to that other picture. And that was a good one too. Right here. few more observations. You can see the bottom of the ear muscle relates to the bottom of the eye orbit right through here. Um, still not much light up under the, between the ear and the antler. Um, so I've got some good angles to work off of there. So now I'm just going to go through and um, we're basically going to build an ear butt that looks a lot like this one. This is a whitetail ear cast, um, but I'm just going to use that for reference. And I think we have a little wider eye orbit, um, some subtle differences there, but for the most part, our anatomy is going to be pretty similar. So to start, I'm just going to build a little bit a foundation. I'm going to push that onto the mannequin like so, and I'm going to keep in mind that shape that we had for the outside edge of the ear muscle. And kind of keep that defined there. Thin this out on top. And I'm just going to get it stuck in place like so. And then I can build around the bottom. This is critter clay for all your critters. Um, critter clay is a nice uh, air dry clay, but it dries very, very hard. Um, and one of the advantages of the critter clay is doing these preset ear, ear muscles, um, the ear butts. With stoneware clay, stoneware works great too, but it doesn't have a lot of integrity once it dries. Um, once the skin is dry around a stoneware ear butt, you're going to be fine. The skin will hold it in place. However, um, if you want to remove it, uh, stoneware can break. So just kind of have the rough shape there. And I'm going to have to bounce back and forth in front of the camera a time or two just to make sure. Now that I have two ears on, I want to make sure that they're symmetrical, so I will turn the camera. You, could, you might pan out just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to see here if I'm close attitude-wise. It always helps to step back away if you can. Okay, so with a caribou, your hair, it, there's so much, um, the hair is so dense, for um, hair, I guess, is so dense that no matter how much we do here muscle-wise, not much is going to show through. But um, we are still going to give it a little bit of attention because even though we're not going to define the muscles um, through the outside, um, it will help our skin lay correctly. So don't short yourself in, in sculpting time for your ear butts. It is well worth it to spend a few extra minutes. Um, now, I'll turn. And there's just some some little muscle, muscle shapes that tie across from here. We've got 
one muscle we want to build there, a little a thin little ribbon that's going to tie in here, and then just a little bit right there in front of the scutiform, we'll bring these two little, the little Y together there, and that's really all we're going to need to do. So it, this is really, really good practice. Um, don't short yourself in, in a ear, but work, especially if you guys are, if any of you have aspirations to compete in the future, every single one of your customer pieces is an opportunity for you to practice and to learn. So spend a little bit of time um, and eventually this will just become second nature. Um, one thing to notice with, with these muscles is they're flat. They're, they have some shape to them, but they're relatively flat. They're not round. A lot of people will take their clay and run something round like this and put it in here. And when you start with something round, um, when you flatten it out to the right contour, it, um, it spreads out and gets too wide. So take a second to, to think about your contours and shapes and where these things tie together. Um, we have a little muscle that comes over the front right here. Ties onto the top of the ear. Helps him when he pulls it forward and backward. Make sure I have that nicely shaped. And then we will just go in and do these couple little ones. If I stand in their way, you guys holler at me. A little gap there from our skull. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we'll fill that little clay spot in. There we go. And now just two minor little muscles to sculpt here. That one usually goes up on a deer that'll tie up to the base of the just about to the base of the antler burr. And we'll bring this one down here. And even if you did this incorrectly, even if your anatomy was slightly disproportioned or muscle locations were not um, perfectly accurate, you're going to have a much better result than if you were to just push a bunch of clay up into the ear skin, um, just from size and proportion. So definitely worth doing. You don't have to spend a ton of time on it, but um, I'll turn this for you to see in just a second as soon as I clean it up. I think I raced through the weather report. I think so. It really so is nice, nice today. It is. It was kind of overlooked that. It's really nice out today. We've had some awfully warm days. Humidity and feels like winter drug on, drug on, drug on, and then all of a sudden summer hit. Yeah, it's like one extreme to the next. Yeah. Yeah, but today it seems very, very nice. Mm -hmm. you okay. That rain. Yes, definitely. The rain will be very, very welcome. Okay. And then there's just that little tie in that comes down that helps tie in the. this muscle to the side of the head. 
down the jawline. So we'll kind of leave that about there. I think that's going to be pretty good. I do want to pop over and make sure that I'm close to my other side. Okay. And if you can see what we did there, yeah. I think that's pretty good. Now, one more thing that we really like to do makes a big difference, big help, um, is to, if you're going to leave these and do like we did on the other side, um, we're going to coat these with glue. And I just have a little bit of Pro One hide paste over here. Um, Pro One's a great glue. Um, so much hair on a caribou color isn't going to matter. Um, lots of good hide glues for this. Um, Dermagrip works really well. Um, as well to coat these, but I'm just going to paint a real thin coat, trying my best to keep it out of the nice velvet, but I'm going to put a real thin coat over all of the clay. And also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a coat of glue over the entire ear liner. And that's going to act as a bit of a primer, a base coat. When we go to glue the ear in, um, really going to help promote adhesion. So we like that step. I think uh, Dermagrip has that step on their ear adhesive instructions, and that's a really, really good suggestion. So just a nice thin coat. Ear liner. Um, I will occasionally, as your Pro One gets a little bit thicker just from time, um, or if it were to get real cold, freeze during the winter time, um, it's nice to mix that um, with a paint mixer. Um, that works exceptionally well, and it will take that stiffer glue and really soften it up. If you have to, you can add just a tiny, tiny bit of water if you want to thin it down. Um, I wouldn't recommend much water at all. Um, one of the issues that taxidermists are constantly faced with is shrinkage, and shrinkage comes from things dehydrating and losing the mass of water. So if you add a whole bunch of water to your glue, and then you encounter a bunch of shrinkage, and you wonder why, it's because all the water went away. So don't add a whole bunch of water to your glue. You can add a little bit. Um, but that should be real nice. And that's just enough to cover, just enough to cover the ear skin. And we will let that dry. Now, now we can fast forward to tomorrow. And this, this would have dried overnight. It's going to be all firmed up nice. And now it's time to mount our caribou. So we want to glue the ear liner into the ear skin and going forward in time look at that we have one that's all dry you'll notice that the glue has uh, clarified so you don't see the the white glue it's not sticky it's um it's dried and this has been dry probably eight nine hours i suppose um, so all I'm going to do is cut this off. Um, I want to include almost all of the muscle. I don't want to have these real thin areas because those I will break trying to put it in. But I'm just going to go very lightly, 
cut through the clay. Come back up on top and make sure I cut all the way around this perimeter. And then I'm just going to pop this off of there. Just like that. It all comes off in one piece. And so now I can glue this into my ear skin and I have all of the muscles shaped exactly how I want them. This is nice and firm. Um, nothing's going to break or fall off. And when, when we go to put the cape back on, this, the irregular shape that we cut is going to pop right back into place. And then we're going to know exactly where our ear liners go in that attitude. So we can put that right back together, provided that we don't break this somehow in the process. So now, probably go away from the mannequin, and I will come to the cape. So we've done everything that we needed to do ahead of time to the ear liner itself. This is ready to glue in. However, our skin, we still want to spend a little bit of time with. And for me, this is probably pretty basic, but I always like to, I like to get my cape oriented in the direction of the animal so he's facing away from me and then out of habit I'll take the ear and make sure I have the correct side. We see lots and lots of people that are first getting started with this that end up going this way and that is close but shape wise is going to be kind of funny. So your ear will end up upside down so make sure that you're putting the correct ear in the correct side of the cape. And so I have the right ear, which is actually the right ear for this guy. I'm going to turn it inside, right side, inside out, I guess. And I'm just going to check and make sure one last time that everything is split as far as it can go. Um, there has been a little bit of sewing. This, this ear had just a little bit of damage from the prep work. We got that all taken care of. I think you might see it right there, a few little stitches. But those are pretty easy to let's see right there. Um, so that was done ahead of time. And again, the uh, cartilage is off. So just feeling around. Um, easy if you'll take your index finger and your thumb and just kind of feel along that, that seam. If you feel any kind of a cord there, then you can split down on it. This feels really good. This is well split. Um, so we should be good. Um, now, one last thing we really like to do is to clean our ear skin. Um, during the tanning process, obviously everything that we have here is, this is a wet tan skin. Um, it has been oiled and I, I'm sure that the tannery um, oils the ear skin itself. Um, so we like to scrub up our ears as much as we can with a solvent and I just have a little bowl of lacquer thinner and some invisible gloves here and I'm just going to submerge this let it sit for a second and um, then I'm going to scrub that ear and my goal here is just to remove any oils from the tanning process from any of the ear skin Rarely do you have problems with the back, the back of the ear, which is the thicker side, that the, not the cartilage side, but we still like to get that nice and clean. Um, but this cartilage side over here, we just really want to scrub that up and make sure that it's nice and clean. And we'll clean that up like that. Okay. 
doctor would like to know, do you yeah. paint the ear liner before installing or is there any advantage to buying the liners already colored pink? Um, a great question. Uh, for a caribou, very, they're going to dry very dark inside. Um, you're not going to see much. Um, the ear skin is generally where you'll see any of the color. And we've found that more than a pink ear liner, um, if you really wanted a little bit of flesh color to come through, um, we've found that a pink ear glue um, will actually penetrate into the leather a little bit better and give you more of that fleshy effect if you wanted to do that. Um, so if you, if you want that, I would suggest either the Dermagrip ear adhesive, which is a really good ear adhesive. It is pink, kind of Pepto-Bismol pink. Um, and that, that has a great grip, great, uh, we've had really good success with it. Um, or um, you could probably work with some different tints for your, for your white base glues as well. More than painting, I'm afraid if you painted um, your ear liner, I, I fear that that would be one more surface that would be likely to pull away and, and wouldn't stick as, your paint wouldn't stick quite as well. And then your glue is gonna adhere to the paint. And when the paint lets go, the glue will, will let go as well and you'll encounter drumming. So um, that's kind of where I would go with that. Um, also, so I have submerge this, I've let it sit for a minute, and then I'm gonna come in with our form rougher and do one more little roughing of the skin itself. And don't be too rough here. Any of you that have used these form roughers know this thing will get you and it will, it will leave a mark in either you or your ear skin. But we're just trying to suede the backside, pull up a little bit of fiber. You might get in close on this so they can see um, kind of what that's doing. Yeah. You can see now there's just a whole bunch of little fibers that are kind of suede and standing up on the backside of that skin. And that's all stuff that that glue can grab and stick to. So, got that pretty well done. Now, um, we washed this with the solvent. I'm gonna blot it dry just a little bit. And then it's very important to evaporate the solvent so that it doesn't uh, inhibit any of the adhesion. So I've got a hairdryer here. And I'm not really trying to dry the ear itself. I'm just trying to uh, evaporate the solvent. So I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time doing that on, the, on this side because I don't want it to dry out. If it does, it makes, causes some issues with fit. So not, but I am gonna turn it around and I have quite a bit of lacquer thinner still in, in the ear itself. So I'm gonna blot that dry with a towel in the hair. And then I'm going to hair dryer this also. Don't use high heat, um, especially anytime you use a solvent. You can, if you were to introduce too much heat, you can actually um, cause the hair to curl.
so it kind of scorches the the solvent um, will cause the the solvent and the heat would cause the hair to curl scorch so you don't want to do that um, but that's really all I need now still nice and damp and now I'm just gonna take our hide paste I'm going to put a fresh coat of glue in the interior of the ear liner all the way down, making sure I get good coverage. And then I'm going to bring a little over the back, about two thirds of the way down. I don't want to get a whole bunch of glue in the hair, so I will glue over the ear muscle later after we pull the cape on. But right now I'm just trying to basically cover the, the ear liner. And then I'm just going to take the skin making sure that the cape is headed the right direction. And I'm gonna put the right ear in the right ear skin. And you do wanna orient the ear correctly as you insert it into the skin so you don't have to manipulate it too much. Now I'm just gonna slide that skin back, taxi the skin back over onto the ear butt muscle and tuck. One thing that's very important is to make sure that your inner ear, if you left the cartilage, tucks down into the ear liner and not on the outside. I've seen many people run into that problem where they actually tucked the ear liner or the inner ear outside of the ear liner and then they end up with um, fit issues and can't figure out where that came from. So now we're just going to work these edges really, really well and align the skin as best we can. And by the time we're done with this, we should have a really, really good looking ear. Make sure all of your skin lays nice. Um, one really nice tool I, I don't think I'm going to need, but I set it out to mention to you in case I did, um, is a syringe. Um, an empty syringe is really handy um, when you're doing your ears. If you feel a little drumming or a little gap, sometimes that's not necessarily, if you can get it to lay down nice and just come back 10 minutes later and it's popped up. Sometimes that is happening because of air. You have air trapped in there and it's nice to be able to take just a syringe, just a small gauge syringe and poke it in and suck the air out. Um, that works really, really well. Um, so now we're just gonna groom our ear skin nicely. Get that looking good. Making sure that these little guard hairs lay in, and these little guard hairs head in. Caribou have very, very hairy ears. I think some of that has to do with the buggy environment they live in. Keep all the critters out. So I think we're getting very close here. We'll continue to work those edges. We'll even use our little carding material on these. That's pretty much what we're after. And now it's nice to have this 
set up overnight. And then the next time we come back, um, this will all be tacked up and you don't have to worry about babysitting the ears nearly as much. You can just get right into placing the cape on the mannequin and uh, sewing him up and taxing the skin. So that worked really well. I think I'm going to leave that there. And goodness, I took a long time doing that. Um, I wanted to cover eyes quickly for you. And um, we have recently, I think everybody out there, if you're watching this relatively current, whether it's today, tomorrow, or a week from now, or a month from now, um, probably noticed that there are issues in the eye market. Availability is of, of traditional eyes is changing. Um, sometimes stock is really good. Sometimes it takes a little while to get them. Um, but there are a lot of other eyes out there that uh, previously hadn't been quite as much of a go-to. Um, but make sure this is nice and clean. Um, Sometimes you're just going to have to adapt. And this is an eye. This is a caribou eye. I believe this is a live eye. It's an acrylic eye. It has exceptional detail. Um, caribou have a light eye anyways. Um, but we'll see if this helps show a little bit. Uh, might be too much. But ha this has terrific detail. It's an acrylic lens. Um, very, 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 very nice eye, and um, we're gonna we're gonna set live eyes in this caribou. So, live eyes come with a stem on the back. We've had the bird eyes for a long time, and um, uh, we treat the bird eyes the same. You could leave this stem on. There's no reason that you wouldn't, but I'm just gonna get rid of it because. I'd like to set it like I do more of a traditional glass eye. I didn't mean to throw that at you, Kate. Um, and so I just clipped that off. Now, I am going to put this eye in the mannequin. And we've got a little bit of discrepancy here shape-wise. Um, I have the original eye orbit, and if you remember, there's a whole bunch of muscle and so forth there that um, we have to recreate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this void. You could foam that if you wanted to. Um, it'd be a little bit lighter than the critter clay or Bondo or whatever you want to do there to fill that. But um, I'm just going to get that back to level. And then I'm going to treat this just like any other mannequin. So that's level with the back plate. Um, I would do the same, but in the interest of time, the same on the other side, but in the interest of time, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to put just a little mark right there at that crease and that is going to help you see where the very front corner of the eye will be because i have a lot of room in this um, i'm going to float that just a little bit and i want that front corner to be my reference so i'm going to i like to whether i need it or not i like to remove just a little bit of material in the front corner. I'm going to do just that quickly, like that. And then I'm going to set this eye in relation to that front corner. And I'm not going to worry about this top for right now. I'll come in and, and fill that in later. I, all I'm trying to do is set the angle of the eye 
correctly. And I'm going to say, I, I'm going to, again, relate this somewhat to a deer. which would be less than 45, but not much. Uh, and by that, I mean the back plate, a 45 degree angle off of the bridge of the nose. So I'm gonna set that. I'm also gonna level the pupil, which on these light eyes is extremely important. Um, we wanna make sure that we have that. And then the next thing I'm going to do, um, I would normally set the other side, um, but I'm just going to do one eye for you today. We may come back and do the other again the start of next week, but um, just to have a refresher for you. But I'm going to create my upper lid and my lower lid. And you've heard us talk about a three-cornered eye set. Um, one being here, two being the, the highest point of the eye, and the third being more of the transitional change from the back to the front. So one, two, three. And um, I'm going to do that with clay. Now, if you wanted to, if you were really concerned about symmetry, um, what I like to do is roll out the clay like this and I would break it in half so that I know these, both of these pieces are the same diameter, I have the same amount, and I would do one piece for the other side, and one piece for this side. Um, so I'm going to now just shape the upper, um, actually I'm gonna do the bottom. I'm used to going from one to three, I don't know why, but I am. So I'm going to come in here at corner number one. And I'm just going to bring our clay around. And I, one, one suggestion that I would make is the tendency for people is to get very worried about the transition between the mannequin and the clay. And the first thing they do is try and push all of the clay nice and neat against the mannequin. And I'm going to suggests that you don't worry about that and you worry only about the where the clay meets the eye. Now I've got a little acrylic tool here I'm going to use because I don't want to scratch these eyes. Um, and I, I'm just going to worry about the shape of that lid. I know the lowest point on the lower lid is at about the halfway point. And then I'm going to bring this back up like so. I could break that off if I needed to, but I think I'll just leave it there. So that is going to be my lower lid from one to three. And you do want to be very careful with, with acrylic eyes that you don't scratch them. Um, and that's why we have a plastic tool and a brush. Um, and this is a pretty cool little tool to shape eyes with, nice and soft. Like that. Okay. Now my next step is going to be to create the upper lid. And I'm going to do that, again, only against the eye. I'm not going to worry about all this. I'll blend that in later. But I want to create the eye, the proper eye shape. And I'm going to bring that against the glass or acrylic. I'm just going to bring this back here. And I'm only worried about what that looks like against the glass. I don't care about any of this stuff going on up here. I'll get that later. But if you can start with a nice shape like that without over manipulating your clay, um, there's really not a lot of work to do. So that's pretty simple. Um, we have our three corners defined as one, two, 
And corner number two usually occurs in the front quarter to front third of the eye, so, and that's the highest point. Um, number one, usually the pupil itself sits, the bottom of the pupil kind of sits on the midline of the eye the, at the front corner. And then three is typically higher than one. And the belly, the lowest belly point of an eye on a just a regular relaxed attitude will be about the midline of the eye. So I think we hit most of our bases there. Now it's just a matter of smoothing it. If any of you have, are new to this and haven't worked with a lot of clay before, um, big tip, don't overwork your clay. Don't over manipulate your clay. Keep your eyes nice and clean. And then I would just come in and we'll bring another row of roll of clay and we'll blend this into the mannequin up here on top. And there's actually a little bit of muscle on top of that bone that we would need to recreate here. So I would tie all of that in. Um, notice I'm not using a lot of water. I don't like to create a lot of mud slurry from the, the clay on the eye itself. So I'm gonna minimize the water, but as it dries out, it, water can be your friend too, but just make sure that you're, that you're not um, obscuring your eye itself. A um, little bit of anatomy here, this muscle, the front corner. And that's really short of spending a whole bunch of time, which we will come back and probably do a little bit for you. Um, we may illustrate it, talk about it. Um, we may have the caribou sewn up next week and just show you the tucking portion. And if we do that, um, we might walk through the steps. But, but for right now, that's kind of what you're looking for. And Brett, that part of you uh, spritzing your hands with water wasn't shown on screen, but oh, you're seeing the um, moisture now. Yeah, so I just sprayed um, a little bit of water on my fingers rather than spraying it on the clay and on the glass or acrylic. Um, uh, rather than doing that and making a big mess, I just sprayed it on my fingers and I'm kind of smoothing out the clay for you just to give you a little something to look at. Um, got a little build up in the back corner. Um, the tendency is for us to get this back corner just a little bit too thick. Um, and so I'm going to pull some of that clay out. But now it's just fine tuning. At this point, I wouldn't do a whole bunch more. I would cover this eye with a towel and plastic with a damp cloth and plastic overnight. And then tomorrow, if I had the other eye set to match it, tomorrow we could come in and mount it. Um, all of that prep work is done ahead of time and you don't have to uh, come in here and spend the first three hours setting eyes and doing ears and all that. It's all done and you can get right to putting the mannequin or putting the cape on the mannequin. So. Blake Gonnering says he'll see you in a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks? I heard that they are, they might be around these parts. Uh, sometime around nationals, I think. And it won't be too very long. Um, okay. So that's pretty much what I would do. Now we'll just kind of babysit it and kind of fine tune the shapes. But um, I think that covers pretty much everything. Craig. Right ahead for today. Oh, yep. Sorry. Craig Meth would like to know, do you ever do any casting in the field on a traveling hunt like caribou or moose? Oh man, Craig, <laughs> uh, it would sure be nice. It would be really, really nice, but I'm not as young as I used to be. 
and I don't like to pack all that extra weight, um, but it would be fantastic if you did. If you're going on a, a trip like that, the opportunity to collect reference material is invaluable, and um, I definitely, definitely would. Um, that's a great point, Craig. Um, any, any fresh information you can gain um, to bring back is well, well worth it. Well worth it. I think Tom was looking for a cast. He, he had a death mask of a caribou we were looking for last week and weren't able to put our fingers on it. But um, that's a, certainly a great idea and a great suggestion. And the next time I go caribou hunting, I'll call you, Craig, and you can come pack my plaster on the trip. Or silicone or whatever we, we want to make a cast out of. But I think that's about, that's about it. You might back up and show them kind of the difference between the one side and the other. He should start looking a little bit lifelike um, now. I probably need a little bit of clay right there. But uh, for the most part, that should, that should kind of get us going. And I think we had a giveaway for them. That is correct. And it's actually that tool you are using right now. Yes. Um, these are a really nice little brush. It's actually a little angle shader. Um, it's great for shaping your eyes. Um, and the acrylic side is beveled. Um, and works as a really nice little eye tool. And um, who are we gonna give that to? The winner goes to Jim Johnson, and I oh. do believe Jim was actually, I saw his name pop up. Oh, nice, so. nice. Yes. All right, well, congratulations, Jim. And um, we will just pick this up again next week. Hopefully, he'll look a little bit, we'll, we'll start making some bigger progress next week. I think he'll have some hair on him next time you see them. Awesome, and just a couple of side notes. We do have a 15% off Father's Day gift idea sale going on right now that ends tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. and that includes our apparel, our large and small reference books, pan pastels, um, a knife set, we've got a form wrappers and some other awesome things on that sale. So make sure to take advantage of that and then also um, participate in our Father's Day coloring contest. Um, all ages are welcome for that, and that um, needs to be submitted by, I believe, tonight at midnight. Tonight? Ooh, yes. better get home and do my homework. Yeah, <laughs> so, and all ages are welcome. So. Nice. All, all right, right, you guys all well, have a good